say if a child feels unwell in school, but they don't tell the parent until that night, and then that night the, the mum takes them, the, the child to the, to the doctor or whatever, and they test positive for COVID, are they counted as a school infection or as a community infection? Maybe yourself, Michael, could maybe answer that, just to clarify that in terms of figures. Any, any case, sorry, any case of COVID is, has to be reported to the HSE mm. and then public health, as I mentioned earlier, there's a public health risk assessment mm. done. So it's then up to the HSE to decide to contact the school and to trace back. Uh, so what, I think once they're identified as being a student, it's the HSA, H HSE follows up on it, the public health follows up on it. Uh, it's not something that this, the school or the principal would be doing. But then when the principal is contacted, uh, he will then tell you know, should be able to tell or will be able to tell the close contacts, the way the school was organised that day. But are they counted, just to, just to maybe Sorry. just get it straight, they're, they're, are they counted as community or are they counted as school? If they, if, there, do we know? Sure. If they go through the community and they are not traced back, they may be just counted the community, but it's a HSE issue. It's not the schools that are recording on any of this. I know, but therein the problem lies, mm. you see, because we had the minister in the other day and it was, well, that's all public health, you know, that's not my responsibility, it's all public health. And what I fear happens is that it's, it, things have fallen between the Department of I'll Education. I'll bring you in a second, okay? Things have fallen between the Department of Education and public health. And if we could maybe obviously improve the communications around that, but if we could get clarity around where the areas of respons responsibility are and the interface, and whether the interface is working or not, that might be good. Maybe yourself, John. Well, I, I was just going to say, Deputy, you see, they're not really counted, okay, because they're counted somewhere. Yes. But we, ha we aren't seeing that data. And this is a major concern okay. for us, N okay. not because we feel that there are millions of them. Yes. Okay. But people would like to know for sure yeah. what the answer is yeah. to how many people yeah. in the school settings have tested COVID, exactly. uh, positive for COVID-19. As of um, yesterday's report for week 46, 712 detected cases. That's a very small number yes. out of a million people. Yes. But they are only the cases that were detected after mass testing was done in a school. Yes. They don't count the index mm. case. And nobody knows how many of those indices there are. And um, nobody knows either, by the way, how many primary teachers, how many yes. secondary teachers, yes. how many childcare workers, how many yes. SNAs, because we're only getting a breakdown of people aged over 18. Yes. Some of them could be leaving such students. Yes. So we need more data. And if we can get them in other sectors, uh, meat factories and yeah. in construction sites, uh, down to the person's date of birth, mm. if necessary, mm. um, for the stakeholders. Mm. Um, we, we really need to get this done. That's data exactly confident. my point, you see. How can we address problems and issues that are being raised by all of you, I think, in a very good way today, and that we raised with the Minister the last day? If there is a denial of what the problem is, or the, the, the quantity, you know, the, the size of the problem, maybe there isn't a problem there at all. But if there is, we need to address it, and we can't have this cover. Whose, whose responsibility do you believe it is to furnish us with that raw data to be able to quantify the problem? Well, if I could suggest, it's the responsibility of the Minister for Health. It's an HSE issue, and at the moment they have two reporting streams. Mm. Public Health tell us that when they test in schools, uh, the positivity rate is less than 3%. It looks very reassuring. If you look at the general case index, of cases uh, that have been detected uh, between the ages of four up to the age of 18, you find qu quite a high proportion of the total COVID case load comes from that age group, which suggests that the public health intervention in schools is not capturing all of the details mm. on COVID spread because it doesn't include cases detected in the community mm. outside of public health investigation, and, outside of school. Yeah, so I get it. And, and you, as, as, as heading up the unions, have you requested that information from the Minister for Health? We and have. what has the response been? Uh, yeah. Look, um, your question is opposite, and, it, and uh, it, we share your frustration. Mm. Um, we've had difficulty in recent months getting information. I wrote to the HPSC earlier in the year, uh, in September, seeking a meeting. They refused. I wrote to the Minister for Health to ask them to meet us, and they still refused, and the Minister mm. refused. Uh, we eventually got around to when we were having meetings, and the quality of the information, as I said, is improving, but we have a road to travel. Now, I asked precisely the question, Deputy Walsh, that you asked yesterday. Um, what is the situation in relation to a student who goes home, 
go to their GP, how are they counted? I didn't get an answer, but I am continuing to, to pursue it. But I didn't get an answer yesterday when I asked the question, but I will be continuing to pursue it. Okay. Because I think it's very important, because it is very vital to understand that, you know, what's happening in schools is accurately tabulated. Exactly, and I think maybe we can support you uh, as a committee here, and I would suggest maybe to the, to the committee chair that we would write to the Minister for Health and that we would ask for uh, that data to be furnished in order for us all to be able to do our job um, uh, responsibly.